kitano. Eh ama nikikimbia kwa sasa. Kitano kitembea au kitano ki. Nikitanda kwa nikiwa kwa movement nikikimbia tu kitano tu kidogo. Unafikiri you train ama bado hujatrain after train hapo tu hujatrain. Anything umefanyia huko? Hakuna ni kuchoma tu na maji moto. Kuchoma na maji moto. Alafu kichoma inafura au inaacha kufura? Ah nikichoma inaacha kufura lakini niki nikiraoka tena kesho na paratio kusweli nimerudi tena. Na uchungu? Ah uchungu. Tuseme kama kuna uchungu iko zero alafu uchungu kwa juu sana iko 10. Hiyo uchungu yako inaweza kuwa wapi? Kwa uchungu hivyo. Eh tuseme like sasa kama hauna uchungu kabisa ni zero. Alafu uchungu kwa mingi kabisa iko huko juu tena. So hapo katika 0 to 10 hiyo uchungu yako inaweza kuwa wapi? Inaweza kuwa tuseme imefika ka 7 hapo. Imefika 7. 7 ni mbaya jamaa. 7. 7 ni mbaya. Umesikia? Lakini ni sawa tu. Okay. Jina yako ya pili ni Tony nani? Kodua. Kodua. Okay. Uko na miaka ngapi? Pili. Hawa sawa. So umesema kuna uchungu kwa magoti. Ah uh, uchungu kwa mbele, nyuma, ndani. Au okay, nje? Kando na hapa kando. Ndipo na kando. Eh. Yeah. Usikio uchungu tu like full time. Hadi sasa unasikia uchungu? Ah sasa sasa. Mkunywa pana dola ama diklofena nako? Ah sija kunywa diklofena. Sawa. Eh. Akunywa nithi ngomekunywa? Hakuna. Ndio kunywa supu? Ah. Eh. Bligongo kwa grao matulianza yenyewe tu. Nili land vibaya. Land vibaya. So, nataka tuangalie mguu wako ndio tujue exactly nini za kwa noma. Alafu utapata madawa kulingana ile uchungu utakuwa nayo ama ile noma itapatikana ndani then from there utakuwa unakuja sessions za therapy sessions na pia tukafanya rehab. Sasa hizi hakuna ku train. Sawa. Ni rest. So utakuwa nizo madawa utapata wengine ya kukunywa, utapata wengine ya kupaka uh, for at least a week eh? rest. Kwa ufanye anything. Sawa. So credit zoezi mimi tunakupongea venye tutakuwa tunafanya program yetu. Sawa. Sawa. Eh, zile ma squats, zile jumps zote ni so at least tukimaliza unaweza rudi zoezi murudi cheza ball kwa fit. Si ndio? Sawa. Swali yote? Hakuna. Hakuna swali? Sawa. And as Daktaria said, we are at the German Medical Center. Very important that we get to understand the importance of a sports physiotherapist. And yes, Dr. Udongo is here with us. Uh, we'll be taking us through this session that is very, very important. It is that moment of the World Cup and you understand how the sports action is crucial for very many people. So we know what it is that they do and importantly, their role when the action or when the game is on. Daktaria, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you so much, Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, we are at German Medical Center. Yes. This is our department where we now handle the injuries that we pick from uh, the field. That right. is both training uh, and our games. Mm -hmm. This is where now the you know, action the is. Media work is, is done. You know? I'm all excited. You know, for a moment, I have not sat down to think about this actually. As so I was going around, you know, our social media platforms, then I bump onto your uh, page and I was like, oh, actually, this is quite an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And every time there's any action, you know, in the field, any game is on, you realize that there are always ambulances around. And so you just do not sit down to imagine that uh, this happens and it's very, very important. And so uh, specializing on this, I think we are all excited to learn something more about the sports world, especially when it comes to the question of medicine. So we're excited. I see the patient is here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's good you came. Well, we have a patient here. Uh, his, his name is Tony. Yes. He's our player in Nairobi City Stars. Okay. Yeah, he, he got a knock, uh, uh, I think, two weeks ago. He started complaining of pain on his knees mm -hmm. after playing uh, right. in one of our matches. So uh, we looked at him. Yes, Tony. Mm. I looked at him, I uh, did all our examinations. Yeah. And we realized that he has a, he has a meniscal issue. And that is, meniscus is uh, among the soft tissues, among the shock absorbers with the knee. So he has a bit of a, he has a tear. Those, although minor, it's not major, that mm -hmm. can be managed conservatively. Okay. Through physio, giving exercise and handling all that, it will go uh, well in a, in a period of a week or two. So we're uh, going to handle his case today. Mm -hmm. yes. Before we even get to handling his case, uh, maybe I should ask what are some of the common uh, sort of injuries that one can get when they are in the game? You know, whatever kind of game. Okay. Uh, I mean, you speak of soft tissue soft injuries? Soft tissues, yes. Yeah, so how, like how many other different ones are there? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, sports is wide. Yes. Just a normal walk is a sport. You can be going up the stairs, that is a sport. So it only, it only depends on how you do it. That is one of what brings the different meaning mm -hmm. between a sport and exercise and your normal walking program. Okay. So sports is wide and uh, sports is, is a game of injuries. We always say that injuries are part of, of the games. All right. Be it in football, be it in rugby, be it in cricket, be it in swimming. So injuries are part of the games. Mm -hmm. you know? So some of the common injuries that we do get is uh, we have we get knee pains a lot in football. Okay. 
you get groin pains, you get pain on the IT, that is a band that comes from down the waist to around the knee when it traps a lot. You get the pain, you, you get the normal ankle strains, sometimes you slide up the stairs, you feel a lot of pain on your ankle. So these are some of the common things that we get yeah. in our daily lives. Right. Sometimes it can, uh, it can be bad to a point of getting up a head injury. You get concussions. Right. You know, things have happened that you know, uh, football is contact. Right. So everyone is uh, fighting for the position, and everyone is fighting for a win. So. Mm. The contacts are too much, and some may be heavier than what your body can carry, and yeah. injury can become more severe or serious. Okay. Yes. You say his is two weeks old Yes, it's two weeks old. Mm -hmm. yes, so, weeks old. Uh, the first instance, of course, while it, it is happening, you are you were with him? Yes. All right, and so you've worked with him yes, up until yes. it's two weeks yes, now. Yes, yes, So it's work in progress. Yes, it's work in progress. All right, so let's see. Yes, it's been my case for all that time. You know, I'm always in the field during training, so whenever an injury happens, injury occurs, I'm always available mm -hmm. to attend to react to And it. how important is that to, to have a medic around, you know, a medic personnel every time there's a game even during the training yes times? yes okay yeah. just how important but the important is having a professional or a medical person on the ground is it? sometimes we may do away with the complications that may arise okay. and always there to help save a life right the main thing the field of medicine is saving a life mm -hmm. is the most important aim of everyone being in the medical field right. so you know being that soccer is a game where you can go higher you can come back and land and you get your knee dislocated you know mm. You get bruises, you get cut. So that's why it's always important to have someone on standby to help handle any situation that may arise medically. Okay. Yes, and save a life. Generally. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so this Tony, just as I said before, uh, got his injury in the field when you were training, complained of knee on the pain, uh, was on meds for around three days, but no better progress. So we decided to take it far, did an MRI, get all that I said. He had a meniscal injury. So we're doing physio management, that is conservative management. In management of injuries can either be conservative or surgical. Mm -hmm. So when it, when it gets too severe, you cannot take you back to the surgical management. But for now, we're going to do conservative management. So uh, on examination, so first thing that you do when you get a patient mm -hmm. with any complaint of the knee, yeah. you must do an examination. Okay, so this is the rule. This the, is the actual rule of the physiotherapist yes. now. Okay. Because the examination is what will guide you on what you're going to treat. You, know? you can't treat what you don't know. And you can only know what you're treating after doing the examination. Yes. So examination is what will give you a diagnosis. And this is what you're going to treat. So without that, you can't handle anything. So any moment uh, a player or anyone says to the facility, we, we have the process where now we get the history. Okay. History now where we talk to him, what happened, how did this happen, you know, what is limiting you from doing and all that, then now we come to handle it. So okay. sometimes, you know, there's a bend, there's a little bit, you know. So sometimes you can always be checking on the ACL. ACL is a ligament for the knee. Mm -hmm. It's called the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay. It's, uh, it's the leg, uh, ligament that uh, prevents hyper extension of the knee. Okay. The knee doesn't move too much on the forward, but called okay. the ACL. It's among the ligaments of the knee. There are always two. Okay. There's ACL, the forward one, and the PCL that's always in the box. Okay. This is one of the things that you must check when you're coming on board. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you bend your knees a little bit. Could you dog up a little bit? Okay. And you high up. So sometimes you always try putting pressure on these, eh? right. and you check. If it's moving. And it can be painful. Yeah, it can be okay. painful. When someone has an injury problem, it has to be painful because right. you're trying to destroy the formula, the pattern of the knee. So, you know, you put a little bit of pressure, then you do an examination. You know, if it moves too much, or also look at the face of the person okay. you're handling. Yes. Some of them may not be open to tell you exactly how you're feeling. Right. Right? Everyone is competing for a position in the team. Oh, so, so some of them will be like hiding up okay, the pain. So yes. like they can join the game next. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So they may not tell you exactly if they have, but from the look, the face you can always know if there's pain or because you have to react. That's how the body is made. You have to respond to pain. That's true. So we'll check for Tony. So his ACL is okay. Okay. Now we handle the uh, PCL. So uh, the one we did the first was PCL. The one we're pulling now is the ACL. Okay. So when, when someone has an ACL tear, you'll always see uh, the lower part of the foot that is this bone. This okay. bone is moving mm -hmm. over too much. There's a distance of around uh, millimeters. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's how you check. That's the first examination you do for everyone who presents with the pain. Right? All right. Yes. And then after that, you come and check on uh, if, uh, is, is there any swelling? I got to You come and check if, if the swelling, you know. Sometimes you can even be used to, uh, you can be forced to use a tape measure okay. to check uh, the normal the knee. The normal knee and the other. Yes, to get to. Are there instances where swelling would appear almost immediately? Uh, yes. Oh. Swelling always appears immediately because, you know, once you get a contact, yes. the blood moves faster okay. to the injury site, you know. Because the whole body security moves to help you mm -hmm. and send away all bacteria to help you get the pain relieved. You know? so, okay. And again, you know, when you get a contact, you know, you get tears of blood vessels, you get injury to the blood vessels, and therefore blood flows under high pressure right. to come to the center. That is why swelling always sometimes happens immediately. Yes. And again, it also depends on the injury site. On bone uh, cases, maybe fractures, you lose or get swelling, but uh, on, on minimal occasions. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So, you know, he has no pain on uh, examination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I don't want to take it down. So we want to check on the meniscus. Yeah? Okay. So you do this bend a little bit, 145 degrees, then you try turning. Okay. Turn it for the Oh. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. So you get it because now we're going to the, the meniscus. We're putting the pressure into the meniscus. That way he has to he has to respond to, right. through the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah, so because when he got the, the injury, he was just going to get a ball by himself and probably he turned wrongly. Mm -hmm. but not in a good way that he decided to hurt his uh, meniscus. So meniscus, yes, as I said, the shock absorbers of the knee. Right. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in management we first of all you check on the level of the injury mm -hmm. and to the extent. What is what is the injury limiting him from doing. He's a football player. Okay. Tony, any way you can find him? Pick up a pass with the king. Pick up a pass with the king. Side, straight. Side, side. Side, eh? Okay. So, turning is the normal thing. So, you can be on belly. You can be on belly because of the pneuma. Because of the pneuma. So, all that he's giving me is always in relation to what I was examining. Okay. Because in case, most cases of meniscal injuries, turning is a problem because the moment you turn, the knee is trying to glide over the knee. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the bone is coming to rub over to the meniscus space. Mm -hmm. And since it's hot, it's still bleeding, still fresh, that's why it's feeling pain. No? And that's mm -hmm. why even if I do the test I was doing, it's feeling pain on the medial part of mm -hmm. the knee. Yes, okay. I mean the inside part. Yes. So, what is the name? The name the So, he's been on meds for... Two, the two yes, weeks, uh, yeah? for the past five days. Okay. Eh? Yeah, that he's been taking uh, the muscle relaxants and the painkillers so that... You cannot handle a patient who has pain, so it's here so that you can do all the pain. Okay. Again, being a player and the damage that probably that you've got, that's why we had to give him some of the medications mm -hmm. to make him be better, do the pain, then you can start the rehabilitation process. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing here is treatment and rehabilitation. Okay. Yes. All right. right. Most of the times people tend to, and I think this happens down on ground when people are just doing their very own sort of games, you know, community games and all that. And so they don't always get uh, quick medical attention, or almost immediate medical attention uh, once there's a sprain and all that. And I have personally seen a friend of mine who had, you know, complications way later, extremely way later that he could not even walk. And this culminated from the fact that he was playing his game somewhere when he was, you know, in high school, uh, got this sprint or got this, uh, you know, injury, but really did not get so much so into getting medical attention. Just what are the dangers of not doing or you know, having immediate checkups? Uh, just as we've said, complications are uh, problems that you get daily if you're not managed early enough. Because you want to know the level of the injury that you have, the damage that the injury caused you, if not mm -hmm. examined. Yeah. That's why I always say that no matter how much you can do as, as a home based, the eyes you can do, the heat, the massages that you can do, it's always good to get a professional help to yeah. advise you. Go to the hospital, be helped, let all the tests be run so that you can get a problem done once. And yeah. If you don't treat it now, some days later it may occur. Okay. But not in a severe way more than it was fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay, so for our case, Tony has a bit of a swelling from observation. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of pains on uh, yeah. the knee. Yeah? Mm. Okay. Uh, so in physiotherapy, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, machines. There's electrical part. We have electrical machines that we use in management of this pain and treatment. Okay. Some of them we have here. All right. There's just a few, but there are more of machines. Uh -huh. So uh, the one role of physiotherapist is to manage the pain. How do you manage the pain? You can use a, you can use a, the hot box for the warmth, you know. Warmth relaxes the muscles, they open up the blood vessels, they reduce the pain. Mm -hmm. and all that will help you achieve uh, uh, the, 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 the reduction, the, of, the reduction pain. of the pain. Yes. yes. Number two is always uh, to do away the stiffness, you know. When you have an injury, yes. most of the issue stiffness sets in because you can't come to work with that part of your body. It can be your hand, it can be your elbow, it can be your you know. So the pain limits you. And after a certain duration of time, if the muscle is not in any action, it stiffens. Uh, so it's important to have it, you know, it active. Released, yes. Okay. It's good to have it released and that is why there's rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So that's another role of physiotherapy. To do away with the pain, to do away with the stiffness and again to give the muscle strength. Okay. He's a football player. Right. After some few days, I expect him to go back to the field because that is his job that he's doing. His, his job is soccer. So he has to go back to the field so that he's also able to take care of his business. Mm -hmm. That is why you have to come and check on the strength. Right. For you to be in a position to kick a ball, your quads, I mean the top muscles, the lower muscles, the arms, you must be in a position stronger mm -hmm. to give you the weight, to give you the power, to give you the balance and the coordination to help you. Oh. Yes. All right. So um, just how often is it necessary for a player to have 
checkups, I'm assuming, even before you get any injury. Yes. Is it important that, uh, you know, if this is what you do, this yes. is your money, the football players that are playing and representing the various countries at uh, the World Cup today, just how often should they go for this, uh, you know, checkups? Checkups are important depending on how you are scheduling. Okay. In, in your training program, you need to have a session with uh, your physio, your doctor who is attending to you, so that you can be in a position to explain for him mm. how you're feeling. Probably after maybe around two, three days of training, you go to him, tell him, no, I played this way, I made some turns. It may not necessarily be training, but even injury prevention is done by physiotherapist. Okay. Yes. Rehabilitation. Injury yes, injury prevention. Oh, okay. Yes, there's injury prevention, there is treatment, and there's rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So you can always go for consultation, like, no, if I do this, I feel more pain. So I can always advise you on the best way to handle some of the things to do away with the pain and help perform better. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I always see the excitement there is, uh, especially with these big games, uh, to have you know one of your favorite players coming back to the field yes. after an injury. Yes. Just how long can one be advised to stay away from the game if they have a simple mild injury? Yes. Uh, the duration you can take to be out of the game, to be out of training, depends on the injury that you have. Like Tony is, 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 is not doing the game right now. He's not doing the game. He's not actually not even training. Yes. He's on total rest, on therapy, and on rehabilitation. All right. After this, now we'll be doing the strength training for him because before you go back to the game that you used to play, probably his fitness levels have gone down. Mm -hmm. So you also have to boost the fitness levels for this game okay. so that it doesn't come to tire up at an early minute when he gets back to play. Right. Yeah. So you always feel good when your player gets back to play because you always appreciate the work you have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you feel good because this player was once in my hands, I handled him carefully and now he's back. You, know, you form part of his system. Mm -hmm. You form part of his development. That's why most of as always enjoy when you see our players get back to the field. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, even as fans, eh, when they hurt, you literally hurt alongside them because yes. it feels like now he's not going to be around for the next two, three weeks. Because that's your favorite player. Misses, right. You know, he yeah. misses the games and it really breaks your heart. Yes. So, uh, very, very important that we perhaps get to understand the significance of checkups. You have told us the significance of them. Yes. But, uh, you know, medication, uh, once you get into a game, and I know maybe Tony would be the best person to answer that, but all the same, yeah. having yeah. dealt with them, I yeah. want to, for you to advise us on that or tell us what happens. The importance of something like insurance, yeah. because you realize that then if you are, you know, in any sport, then you're prone to being hurt, like you started by yes. saying, you're always a candidate yes. to being hurt. Yes. Just how yes. important is, you know, this case of insurance and all that? Yes. Uh, insurance are very important in uh, this sense, you know, you, diseases never knock, injuries never knock. It may come in a situation that you have nothing to sell in your pocket. It's always good to plan, uh, to plan early enough and have something for, mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. you to get a better treatment and again on time. And that's training other people of doing different raisings, you know. So that's one thing of having insurance. Right. It helps you plan yourself and helps you keep your health in order mm -hmm. by not or by always getting the medical care anytime that you need because okay. of the cover that you have. So in every kind of game, then we have we always have a medical personnel. Yes, yes, yes. And do you like, for instance, you? Let's just talk about you. Are are you specific to a certain game, sports, or you can handle any sports, a uh, man or woman? Uh, being a medical professional, you can never say that I'm specific on this. Oh. You there to save a life. Okay. Maybe you may you may just be a fan. You may just go to a game as a fan. Mm -hmm. You see a player hurt. What do you do? You just run for the field to go and help. So, uh, for now I'm in football. But I'm always uh, available for any game that I'm called upon. Some people do call us for maybe when they have their rugby games, mm -hmm. you come help us on board. Because again, of the experience that I've gained in sports. Right. And being that I'm handling more of players in, in the sports arena, mm -hmm. that's why can be anywhere. All right. Yes. So handling them is a little bit different in terms of, you know, the strain, speaking of the hamstrings, yes. speaking of, you know, a twist, yes. uh, speaking of instances where you had, you know, different parts of the body. The way you handle them is totally different. Yeah, I always say that uh, handling a play is always different from handling a normal patient. Okay. Let me just say an example like you, you know, you come here with knee pain. Our main goal is to do away with the pain and make you, make you be okay as, right. as you want. But now to him, the pain should you have to go. Extra. Should go. Uh, uh, the strength must be there mm -hmm. because there's a game that is playing that is in relation to his injuries. Yeah. So you must give him the better care. You must give him something more than what you can give just a normal walking mm -hmm. patient. Because just as I said, majorly you, let's walk in, let's manage the pain, you back to your job. But him, he has to be strong, he must be physically fit. And again, you must also advise him on the best way to prevent the injury for next time. Yes. Yes. So eating habits a little bit different. Probably because yes. I'm imagining that now, as you you know try to treat them and all that. Yes. Uh, they have to be advised. This is what you're going to eat. This is what you avoid and all that. Yes. So we less closely the nutritionist advice them. Uh, the position the player is playing very important. Right. Be a goalkeeper, be a striker, be a defender, be a midfielder. Mm -hmm. They're different differently because of the position they play. And again, to help them build up their body. You know, a striker should be someone lean and able to run. You know, yes. should be having the height. Mm -hmm. So you can't feed a tracker the same way he's feeding up a defender. Yeah. So we always work closely with nutritionists and our other medical our personnel to help us mm -hmm. make our players be in a better position to play both in the country and out of the country.
All right. Yes. For it to be a success, I would want to imagine that home care as well is very important. True. That as Tony steps out of this place, there are a couple of things you've told him that yes. he has to do. You have yes. to take this exercise and all that. Just how crucial is that? And what are some of the things that they're supposed to do now when in the absence of the doctor? Yeah. And of course, by the time they're coming back to the doctor, then you can evidently say that Tony did whatever it is that I instructed. Uh, for most of our cases, we don't send people on oral medications. Oh. Our drug is exercise. We give okay. you a program. We don't give you in class to go to home because mm. you need to work even yeah. if not coming to the hospital. You only have minimal time with me in the day. Mm -hmm. A day has 24 hours. You can only have me for probably for one hour. Yeah. So what do you do for the rest of 23 hours? Give you a program, you know. When you look here, we have some of the exercise modalities. There are burns, there are weights. So you advise the player on whatever to do as per the condition of the injury he has. Mm -hmm. Yes. So like Tony now has a knee injury. I expect him to be back to training probably after a week, that's hopefully next week. Mm -hmm. So he's on a program that is following up, a success program mm -hmm. that is following up. Because that is now the medication that he's taking. Okay. Uh, always say that uh, I'm as well as in a dawa. Oh, yes. So, right. so the dawa Tony is taking now is exercise. Okay. So, yeah. But how can you exercise? Uh, because there are instances then you take the wrong exercises yes. and you end up you know, hurting yourself even more. Yes. So how do you get it right and know now this is the right uh, form of exercise uh -huh. that will not perhaps strain the strain more? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. When I started, I said that it's always good to consult. Yes. Professionally. Yes. But uh, uh, advice and doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always help you. Always constant communication. Constant communication. Like, what can I do? I've woken up this way. I'm feeling this way. I'm a little bit weak on my right foot, on my right knee. Feeling a lot of pain. What should I do? So you, it's always good to consult with a physiotherapist on whatever you need to do. Mm. Don't just burn pain and you know you can you can overdo and get an overuse injury. Mm -hmm. You can as well underdo. Yeah. So once you've given up a program that I follow personally, because. After every training program, I always know that how my player is doing. I have all the records in my mind. Because okay. I know Nani is able to do this. I told him when he goes to training, he should not do this because of his injury. Some of these things can aggravate. The exercise you're doing can be also the, be the cause of your main problem. Yes. Because you may be doing it wrongly. You may be thinking that you're doing it rightly, you're doing it wrongly. Mm -hmm. And the wrong thing that you're doing to your body is why sometimes your back hurts, your neck hurts, mm -hmm. your shoulder hurts, your knees hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to get an advice of a professional take you through your access program. Okay. Yes. So sorry, allow us to take a quick short break okay. and then we come back perhaps check uh, some more on what the machines are all about okay. Okay. as of course before we kill it today. What's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs, celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs, celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs, celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well 
do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday and Feel Good Friday with amazing DJs, celebs, <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Well, do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs, celebs, <laughs> comedians. <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. <laughs> Eye care is very, very important. Sometimes you just sit there, you probably do not know uh, what complications your eye or your eyes are going through. And I uh, you know sometimes before you know it, you are having your spectacles. Well, at some point in time, it looked like it's a, it, it, it's a class, it's a nice thing to do. Over time, you realize the difficulties that come along with that. You are exposed to light, you're using your computers on a daily, you know, the UV rays, you're connected to so much, the dust and all this. So that means you probably need to have constant checkups on your eyes. But because as a country, we probably are not so much fo uh, focused or we're not so huge on that, I guess it's only important that we just get to understand the nitty gritty details, the basics of eye care right here on a body garage that is uh, taken through this by Dr. Damian of RFH, that is the Roy Family uh, Hospital. Uh, Dr. Damian is an optometrist and uh, he will probably take us through uh, this session and tell us how important it is to just have constant eye checkups. You know, it could sound expensive, but it could save you a great deal. And so, Dr. Tari, thank you so much for creating time for us and also welcoming us here. I can almost tell that there's so much activity that is here and we all hope to learn out of this. I didn't know that as well you people have cameras on uh, when it comes to the aspect of eyes. Oh my God. Mm. You, are, you are here, we'll show you everything. I am looking forward to that. So yes. please uh, introduce yourself to us and tell us what you do right here at uh, the RFH. Uh, good afternoon everyone and thanks Linda for hosting me. My name is Damian Issa. I'm an optometrist by profession mm. and I'm in charge of this optical department at RFH Hospital. And again, I will say welcome and feel free to inquire about anything. Feel free to ask any question. I'll be showing you several things about the eye care and conditions that may lead you to having problems regarding your, your sight as we interact all along. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Terry, I have had conversations with my friends abroad, uh, especially in the mature democracies, and they will tell you that right from childhood, it is almost mandatory for, you know, people to go through eye care, eye checkups, you know, on a constant, I don't know, oftenly. Uh, why is it that we're not adapting this here? And they will tell you that that has great, you know, greatly helped the population not to have eye complications. And that is to mean then that some of these complications that arise in old age, you know, in our lifetime could easily be arrested. Uh, thank you for raising that issue. Uh, currently in Kenya, we are doing much, especially if we focus on the vision 2030. There is a lot uh, that has been laid in that vision uh, regarding the ophthalmic services, that is the eye care. Mm -hmm. But again, sensitization about ocular issues, that is the eye related issues in Kenya and the whole of Africa is not well sensitized like uh, in other countries or in the West countries. Mm. But a lot is being done. 
to make sure the health and the eye in, uh, in general is uh, sensitized and eye conditions that may affect your vision are well brought to light mm -hmm. in time. Um, what goes into these processes of you know testing, you know going for uh, say screening or going for checkups, and especially at what age should uh, should that be introduced? Uh, generally, eye checkup will go with age and the general health of, of an individual. Okay. Like uh, the the teenage, we, we recommend uh, checkup after every two years. Uh, for elderly, we recommend a checkup every one year. Mm -hmm. And those who have systemic condition like diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, those one uh, recommendation is also annually mm. for eye checkup to check how their condition is, how their eyes are progressing. What of uh, us who probably are constant on you know harsh conditions, uh, like I am personally. Uh, pretty much close to lights almost on a daily, you know, those lights that could be a little bit sporty and quite tough. Uh, what of us? Uh, is it a little bit different? No, not much different. Like currently we have many people are exposed to ultraviolet rays that you ultraviolet rays A and B that are somehow others are harmful, mm. others are harmless to the eyes. Uh, many people currently are using uh, technology. We are using laptops, we are using our smartphones, we are watching uh, televisions every day. Mm. This all people, this, all, this generation is at risk, a very huge risk and optical checkup or eye checkup should be annually. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am told that uh, the spectacles I can wear uh, well prescribed by the doctors uh, that really would protect me from these ultra UV rays that you speak about or the UV rays that we keep talking about would uh, protect me from the harsh light conditions would protect me from you know uh, possible uh, conditions that would emanate from me constantly checking on the computer watching television being on my phone on a daily so we have several kinds of spectacles uh, depending on the need or the condition of the patient. We have those, those people who are affected by sunlight, they have their special spectacles, we, we call them photochromatic. We have those patients that are affected by artificial lights, like car headlights or TV lights. This, this patient needs spectacles that have what we call anti-glare. And we also have another set of patients that need special spectacles that we call, they have polarized lenses. So each person or each patient with different needs will get will be prescribed a different type of spectacles. What of contact lens, uh, lenses and uh, those ones that could be for beauty as well as sunglasses? And how deep would one then have a doctor recommend that they have contact in you know, lenses? Uh, contact lenses are usually an alternative to, to those who don't prefer spectacles. Oh, so it's really not because it's, it's a dire situation? No, no, no. Okay. And for the contacts, have special pres uh, have special requirements. For those who have special requirements, mm -hmm. we recommend uh, contact lenses. Mm -hmm. But again, any patient, you cannot give or prescribe contact lenses. Okay. Like for example, Patient with issue regarding lights, contact lenses cannot be helpful to this patient okay. because they do not reduce any form of light. Right. They are just mostly basically for therapeutic cases, uh, for those who are short-sighted or long-sighted. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay, Dr. I think uh, it is fair that we get into understanding the aspect of, you know, checkups and how important they are and the examinations and tests that I probably expect on a random day when I come to you and I tell you, Dr. I just want to have a normal eye checkup just to know whether I am okay. Okay. I will take you through some of the procedures that we do here at the eye, eye unit or any other un eye unit you may visit. Mm -hmm. And I will explain all along whatever we are doing, whatever we are testing, and the possible outcome mm -hmm. of every uh, of uh, every test. All right. So before we get to that um, a diet, how important and crucial is it for one uh, to have proper diet? And are there specific foods that would boost, you know, uh, the well-being of one's eye? Uh, regarding the eyes, there is no uh, specific diet. Uh, the eyes, eye being part of the body, 
any person needs just to have a well balanced diet. What's this with carrots that they say? Yes, everybody says about when you talk about vision, they mm. tell you, did I eat enough carrot or I did less? But carrots improve your vision. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. usually the day vision. Mm. Yes. All right. So these are the tools that are normally used for all this care that we speak of, uh, what we see here today, or there is more to that? At RFS Eye Clinic, we have several machines, and we are lucky to have uh, most modern machines. I will show you. Uh, one of them, if I may begin, this is an autorefractor. Uh, we have uh, a digital vi visual acuity chart. We have a ferropter. We have a slit lamp, and we have a fundus camera. We also have a, a retinoscope, handheld retinoscope. We also have a portable ophthalmoscope. All these are crucial on the process of eye care as well as treatment or? Yeah, this is what we usually call in medical terms, we call diagnostics. They are the equipments that aid you okay. in assessing the patient and coming to a a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. yes. And so once you come to a diagnosis, then the treatment process has got nothing to do with the equipment? No, the treatment process mm -hmm. will depend on the, the outcome of the examination okay. using these equipment. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, how quick would it take for one to be probably diagnosed and then you're told these are the results? and uh, maybe at this level then you need to start uh, this procedure and uh, probably are supposed to undergo a procedure, you're supposed to get spectacles or maybe just go through normal treatment. For, an, for a patient to be examined and uh, the diagnosis determined, the patient will be required to pass through a few, few procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, we will do what we call history taking. We see the background of the information on the healing of the patient mm -hmm. and then the patient will be go to general examination, maybe using a torch, and then to the sleep lab, maybe the refractometer, if the patient we test any, any form, or we, we, we detect any form of short-sightedness. We also, the patient must go through what we call visual acuity testing. This is basic to determine how far or near the patient can see. Mm -hmm. We have other procedures that will require a patient to take time or doing a booking like what we call a fundoscopy. Mm -hmm. We need to dilate the eye of the patient and see up to the back of the retina. So checking the retina, that one needs more tests that can be done for you to ascertain what differential diagnosis or the final diagnosis. But generally from examination, checking visual acuity to coming to a, 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 a final diagnosis will take between five to fifteen minutes. Okay, all right, and uh, the instances I'm told, and I mean with this era of digital, that one can get to, you know, the online space and probably just get to examine themselves. Uh, how, how possible and how accurate would this be? Uh, uh, I'm glad that technology is advancing, mm -hmm. but again, some, uh, some procedures requires the patient to be there. Mm -hmm. Yes, for the, the for, for, for you getting the feedback from the patient. Mm -hmm. Like for the eye care, for you to test the ability of the patient mm -hmm. to see far or clear. Mm -hmm. The patient, him or herself, must be there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we acknowledge technology is advancing, but some procedures, All the right. patient must be yeah. present I, physically. Are there things that you can do at home that uh, would be, you know, would aid in the process of diagnosis and probably uh, would then get you ad being advised to probably seek medical advice or you know get to levels where you can go over the counter and say well give me an ENT. Yes we have some you can do some some things at home to determine your vision like checking an object that it has that it has far it is as it is far uh, and then you are able to see the object or no, that's just a simple test to do what, a simple visual acuity test. Mm -hmm. And then we have conditions whereby you are seeing well, and then suddenly your vision goes off or it gets misty or it gets blurry. Okay. This could be due to maybe aging condition or other systemic condition. As I was saying, some conditions at home may make you to, to seek for ocular health checkup. Mm -hmm small small conditions small changes in your vision 
uh, inability to see prints, inability to see images clearly will prompt you to to go for an eye checkup. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, upon diagnosis, and maybe um, um, there's been a prescription of spectacles, how often uh, before you make adjustments, how often before you get other lenses? Usually, usually the patient that has been prescribed to use spectacles uh, is recommended for every, uh, every one year to go for eye checkup mm -hmm. and check if the patient is okay, the eye, eyesight is okay, they will check the the state of the eye, the spectacles. Mm -hmm. If they are in a good state, the patient will be advised to continue using the spectacles. If there are changes in prescription, the patient will be advised to mm -hmm. check to do a change of prescription and change spectacles. Are there specific do's and don'ts that uh, you know should be looked into before you decide to go for an eye checkup or exam or test? Yes, we have specific do's like. Uh, you, you are ailing from maybe a systemic condition, you must be check, to check to your general body, mm -hmm. the general body condition, and if the need arises for you to see the eye clinic, you will be referred to an, an optician or any eye care practitioner. Mm -hmm. But the don'ts, not really much. Not really much. Not maybe really. we'll because we probably go through the... Yes. Uh, the practical aspect of it. And I know we are all ex excited to probably understand what is, uh, it is that you expect once you go to an optician, right? Yes. And uh, you know, what are some of the procedures that you'd be taken through if that is to be considered an exam or a test of your eyes. So I think it's only fair that we take a short break and I probably have uh, Dr. Damien do some bit of tests on me just to get to know whether my vision is good enough or yes. I, I, I might need Are you are a candidate of, candidate of spectacles. Candidate. I cross fingers that I am after this break. Let's hope so. Welcome back to Body Garage. On this very note, we learn what to expect at the moment you visit an eye clinic for checkups, for a test, or so to speak, just to get to understand whether you are a candidate, uh, you know, of getting specs, as Dr. Damian would say. So, Dr. Chari, I am constantly, you know, um, working under lights uh, that are quite sharp and, you know, the sun constantly on my laptop or my computer, on my phone. I think it's only fair that I get a checkup. Maybe what do I expect or where do we begin, uh, especially in this checkup, as I cross fingers that I'm going to get an anti-glare and not, uh, you know, a diagnosis of probably the need of spectacles. Welcome, Linda, and I'm glad you visited me. I will take you through several eye tests mm -hmm. uh, so that we can get a po uh, final diagnosis okay. and determine the possible solution to your condition. Mm -hmm. Welcome. All right, thank you. So I will take you through, first of all, I will do what we call refraction of your eyes. We see how far or how near are your eyes able to see. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will request you to move here with your seat. Okay. I use the checkup. This is an auto refractor. Okay. And its function is to check what we call, to check, to estimate the, what we, the refractive error of any patient. So today you are my patient. Right. I will check your eyes. Okay. So I'll request you to put your chin over here mm -hmm. and make sure your forehead leans against here. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that? Forehead leans against here. Uh, just look ahead, open your eyes and look ahead. You will see an image. Are you able to see the image? Are you able to see the image? Yeah. What are you seeing? Mm, it's a parachute. Yes, which colors? Mm -hmm. No, these yellow. You still making adjustments? No, I'm checking your eyes as you tell me the, the colors. Well, there's yellow. I don't know whether the bottom bit is orange or red. Okay. Then the other one could be either black or navy blue. Yes. And then now there's the yellow. Okay. Great. So I've taken some measurements from your eyes. Mm -hmm. I will exempt you to the next test. Okay. Yes. All right. So I've already, my machine has got some measurements. Uh -huh. Yes. So we kindly move to, okay. move to this next phase. Okay. Yes. And I'll need to sit down there. Yes. Okay. 
So this is what we call an ophthalmic chair. Mm -hmm. It has a slate lamp, it has what we call a foropter, it has a fantastic camera. Okay. I will do some tests to check the general health of your eyes. All right, so using us. Yes, okay. just sit comfortable on the seat. It's adjustable. I'll do some adjustments. And then while using the slit lamp, I will be using some light. So just for a while, be ready. I will shine some light in your eyes okay. so that I can zoom what could be ailing your eyes. Yes. No side effects to this? No, no side effects. I'm not touching your eye in All any right. way. <laughs> so I'll, again, we'll put our chin here. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable? I should be. Kindly open your eyes. Mm -hmm. So some light. Mm. So I'm checking if your eyes have any, any ocular condition. Mm. Just focus ahead. Great. Mm -hmm. You can relax. I'm glad your eyes are, are okay. There is no ulcers, there is no diseases. Nice. So we'll move to the next chapter. We, are, we want to check now your vision. Okay, so at this point, what are some of the things that one can detect? Some diseases, eye diseases that one can detect at this? Yeah, the function of the slate lamp is. Slit lamp ophthalmoscope is mm -hmm. to zoom any my, my small.